Let's go to the computer to understand how color is put together in digital form. There are a few ways computers can deal with digital color, and they have a direct impact on what you see. This may seem like a far cry from the Dr. Doggy Bowser poster, but I promise we'll circle back to him. Our starting point is our old friend, C-Lab. Remember that C-Lab is called a color space. It's a three-dimensional space on which different colors can be mapped, and it's based on how humans see color. C-Lab isn't the only color space in existence, but it's the most important one when it comes to color management. We'll get back to C-Lab in a later video. The RGB color space is another three-dimensional space. The RGB color space includes all the colors that can be mixed from varying amounts of red, green, and blue light. Each color is combined with a concept of grayscale values to create light, midtone, and dark values of each hue. Then, different amounts of those hues are compiled to create the RGB color space. The RGB color space is smaller than the C-Lab color space. Even though you may not be aware of it, our cameras and computer monitors can't capture or display all the colors our eyes can see. A third color space is the CMYK color space. This graph shows the RGB color space in color and the CMYK color space as the wireframe. The CMYK color space only includes colors that can be mixed by using cyan, magenta, yellow, and black inks. Inks now, not light. As you can tell, the CMYK color space is considerably smaller than the RGB color space, noticeably smaller, and this causes real problems that I'll describe later. Color spaces, those three-dimensional graphs, don't have scales to go along with the color mappings. They show what colors are included in each color space, but they don't tell us the quantity of base colors needed to display the mixed color in each pixel of your photograph. Think of going to a paint store and seeing all those swatches of color on the wall. You might see a light tone of cyan like this one, and then notice a different swatch that's a darker and more saturated version of that same hue. Perhaps you want something in between, so you ask the clerk to mix enough of the two paints to get exactly what you want. In digital terms, we need to attach a scale to these color spaces, but not just any scale. We need to use a scale that's associated with how a file will be used. Once a scale is assigned to a color space, we have what's called a color model. Our cameras, monitors, and cell phones use color engines, or color modes, based on these color models to display our photographs. Let's get into a little more detail. Scientists took the RGB color space and quantified the scale of how much red, green, and blue should be mixed to create any possible color within that space. As we've seen in earlier classes, that scale goes from 0 to 255 for each of the red, green, and blue components that comprise the RGB color space. This is called the red, green, blue, or RGB color model. So a color space becomes a color model as soon as we've assigned a scale to it. Now, let's take this one step further. Any device that displays the colors using that color model is running the RGB color mode, the engine that makes use of a color model. Your camera is probably set to some version of the RGB color mode. I can show you Photoshop while it's using the RGB color mode, and every photo-based software program I've come across uses an RGB color mode in a similar way. In Photoshop, go up to the Image menu in the top left corner. You'll find something similar in other software programs like Photoshop Elements, Corel Draw, or GIMP, but you probably won't see as many options as Photoshop gives you. Click on Image, come down to Mode, and look to see the color mode Photoshop is currently using on the right. Do you see that check mark beside RGB color? This means that Photoshop is using an internal engine behind the scenes to produce those combinations of red, green, and blue to create your photograph. Why is it so important to look at this list? Because people tend to get confused when they look at the color picker. The color picker shows you color models, not color modes. 
Changing the numbers here does not affect the color engine or color mode that Photoshop is currently running. The color picker simply gives you the chance to use your favorite color model to mix the colors you need. It's important to know that the RGB color mode exists, but leave image and mode on RGB color unless there's a very specific reason to change it. You'll learn more about that in a later video. What can you do with this information? Let's take a creative side trip and find out. In the next video, we'll delve into the red, green, and blue color channels.